Off top, birds don't fart. Play music. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show. Welcome to the Dominic Foxer Show. You are joined. I am joined by Charlie. That game was fun, man. That was awesome. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to be joined in a little bit by Mina Kimes also to break down the entire weekend slate. We're going to time travel. We taped that earlier. But first, football. <laughs> I don't think people could tell that they taped that we taped it earlier. We look fresh. You look oh, yeah. vibrant, excited. An ice cream sandwich. <laughs> yeah, ice cream always helps. All right. Where do we start with that game? Like, first of all. Do we start at the end or start at the beginning? I guess we got to start at the end, right? Yeah, the ending of that game with the Chiefs holding on 27 to 20 against the Ravens with an almost touchdown by Isaiah Likely, whose tiny little tippy toe was on the white as he came down with the catch uh, with time expiring. The, the Ravens have done it again as far as like finding. I mean, we saw Isaiah Likely last year just finding replacements oh, yeah, for the yeah. players. Like, he was awesome in this game from the beginning to the end. Isaiah Likely, he had an injury and then came back and made what looked like the game-winning touchdown. Um, Lamar was improv like crazy all, all game. Missed that one pass to uh, Zay Flowers in the end zone, which would have put this game away. Would have given them a chance to go oh, for yeah, two and win it, yeah. Would have put this game in reach, I guess. The Patrick Mahomes catch. <laughs> just when you, game. Yeah, just when you think that, you, that Mahomes can't do anything else spectacular. I think the catch was impressive, but the wherewithal. Are we going to pretend like he knew that he needed to catch it to keep to get the clock to the, running? To get to the two-minute warning. Yeah. The Ravens only had one time out. Um, yeah, that's what we do. We have to add <laughs> it to the narrative. Mahomes, is he's that savvy. If Tom Brady caught that ball, we wouldn't even be questioning it. The big takeaway from this game, those are two yeah, Super we, Bowl we, caliber Yeah, teams. we can zoom out on that. Yeah, that's, that, was a, like, that was an awesome game. It was two Super Bowl caliber teams. I think it was – I was getting worried. Mm-hmm. I, like I felt like the game started with the Ravens early in the game. I was like, "Gosh, this this Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry thing is going to be a problem for everybody in the league." And then as the game wore on, and we noticed that it seemed clear that the Ravens had no desire to like put any pressure on the offensive line to drop back yeah. and throw the ball. I was starting to think about all of the pass rushers that they have to face that they have to face in their division, from Trey to to um, Miles to. TJ, it's just going to be a tough... Such a douche. She's going what? first name basis. What do you want to do? Change. Trey to Miles to TJ. We're, I was trying to make it easy. Everybody who's watching the show knows who I'm talking about. You want me to go last names instead? Uh, you want to go nicknames? It's, it's, we got it now. <laughs> now um, you look so tired. No, I, like I, I am tired. <laughs> that was just a lazy uh, like burn or whatever that is. Uh, you calling me out? Just exhausted. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, that's that was one of the certainly one of the stories of it, which was there was the it was pointed out in the broadcast. People pointed out online. There was a, uh, that at halftime, Lamar Jackson's a dot um, was I think it was around one yard. And that was mostly due to the protection. Justice Hill was out snapping Derrick Henry uh, so that he had so that there were release valves for Lamar Jackson. Yeah. And then in the second half, things sort of changed. And Lamar was able to drive the ball down the field. Ronnie Stanley wasn't getting illegal formation penalties. That was ridiculous. Yeah. Right? That was, I mean, I hate it when they let every, all the tackles last year line up in the backfield. Yeah. And it was clear that they wanted to send a message. But it was inconsistent because Ronnie Stanley stopped doing it for a while. I mean, it really, he was lined up on sides, and then his, like, his head was up high. Yeah. Then he was actually off sides later in the game, and he didn't call it. Jawan Taylor was off sides throughout the game, and he didn't call it. It's a weird... A weird strategy by the referees, but they wanted to send a message to the period to the whole league that we're not playing that um, offsides off the tackle thing. So, in a larger picture, I mean, look, we the Chiefs are awesome. We haven't even said Xavier Worthy's name, who wasn't totally featured in the offense two despite touchdowns. having the yeah the two most explosive explosive plays. I mean, it looks like he has a jet pack up his. <laughs> ass when he's done. It's like it is yeah, it's spectacular. Um, but the Chiefs were sort of a, a known entity. A lot of this offense to me and you'd know better, it looked like it did last year. It was a ball control offense. Rasheed Rice was a safety valve for Mahomes, and they're they're really good. But I think the Ravens have to feel pretty good despite losing this game. Like, there were demons that they exercised. Like, it has been a narrative that they aren't great coming from behind. Like, they're a team that wants to be up, and they're up in so many games, and the offense can sort of uh, falter in these situations. Like, they were great. They were great down 10. Like, uh, I mean, it was the explosive play likely, but even the last drive, 
they were amazing. I mean, obviously Lamar's running is going to be a huge story. He hadn't carried the ball that many times since 2021, and he was spectacular with it. But, like, the the poise and the way that they were able to just eviscerate an awesome Chiefs defense in the last quarter of that game was really impressive. Yeah, they were uh, – it was that one big play from Likely, mm-hmm. the scramble where yeah. um, Lamar did some Mahomesian magic and actually it was mostly Likely breaking tackles, going down the sideline, great block by Zay Flowers. Um, but that two-minute drill, which I guess was a minute 50 seconds with no timeouts to get all the way down the field, was awesome. But it felt like it was really to their advantage. One thing that I saw from both of these defenses all game was complex mm-hmm. coverages that were, or I guess more complex disguises and some unique coverages. I felt like the Ravens brought out a box and one on Travis Kelsey at one point, And they were like, I was, I had a difficult time identifying the coverages pre-snap. I'm sure all the quarterbacks were having a trouble too because obviously ID coverage is as, bit, as good as Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. But what I noticed, obviously, in that final drive, you can't. You can't do anything complicated. They just got in cover four, got in cover two, and Lamar was just buying time. Once the O-line, excuse me, once the D-line was too tired to get after him, there was really nothing they could do with Lamar. We knew he – we called it. Like, they're going to get down inside yeah. the 20 before – like, after one play of that drive. Um, by the way, I, I think you missed an opportunity to call me out for saying something dumb because the Ravens, are they too good for moral victories? Yeah, they definitely are. I, I wasn't going to call you out. You said it when we were walking in here, and I was like, I don't think they feel good about it. I think they are a team that thinks that this is where they belong and they yeah. expect to win that. Um, I also didn't call you out when you called me out for first names and then you followed up with dot. You want me to say average depth of the target? Yeah. I mean, if, if you think people don't understand what I'm talking about when I say first names, you start talking about A-dots, then, yeah. Trey. Trey is the one that got me. Trey, because I, I always want to say Hendrix, but I know it's Hendrickson, so yeah. I said Trey. And then once I say one first name, I was like, you got to be consistent. Mm. Got to go all first names. Yeah. Some people have uh, integrity around here. Um, things consistent. Yeah, that's not me. Integrity <laughs> has never been my strong suit. A um, couple other things that jumped out to me that I wanted to touch on was, like, Chris Jones is amazing. That was Mm -hmm. no surprise there. This Chiefs defense is going to be pretty impressive, even without um, LeJerry Sneed. I noticed that the Chiefs had no desire to attack the edges of the Ravens defense. Like, it was all in-breaking routes all over the middle. They wanted to go at linebackers mostly and maybe safeties, not name uh, Kyle Hamilton. That was what their game plan was. I was surprised to see that they didn't want to test Wiggins, the young corner, He's a rookie. He didn't. They didn't go at him at all. It yeah. just didn't seem like their whatever their game plan was, or not whatever their game plan was. Clearly, their game plan was we're going to attack the middle of the field. The other thing that jumped out to me that I wanted to bring up was how comfortable, and this feels I think a little bit obvious, but how comfortable Kelsey and Mahomes are in the scramble drill, and that was the only real major impact that Kelsey had. Yeah, and I noticed that I didn't. He didn't drop Taylor Swift in uh, in London. We, it's the most nervous he's been about about making a catch in his whole career. I watched the first half with my son, and then I came <laughs> here freezing right past. That. No, no, no. This was about it. And uh, then the second half, I watched it with you, and I got annoyed with him because he got annoyed when they showed um, Taylor Swift, and I was like, "You're just doing that because." Like, you think that's what you're supposed to do. That didn't bother you. No. See, Taylor Swift didn't bother you. Like, you know, we don't like her music. That's fine. They show some other random ugly fan. Like, it's cool. <laughs> I mean, they play Shake It Off. I, I, I was about to say, it's a big reveal. I mean, I don't know her songs. It's not for me. I'm a 41-year-old black man. These songs are not for me. For everyone. No, the hell it's not. They are not marketed. Uh, you can, you might be a folklore gr- girly. <laughs> DVD. I wanted to make the point about the obvious but not so obvious point about their scramble drill. Mm -hmm. This was the thing that jumped out to me is when Patrick scrambled right on that big Mm. play to Kelsey. Patrick. Oh, my bad. When (laughs) I mean, his mom said, don't call him Pat. You remember that? She got mad at Lou Riddick like two years ago, Monday night game. Really? She like tweeted out, his name's Patrick. Hmm. You don't remember that? No. All right, well, Google it. I don't think I made it up. But anyway, he scrambled out. Patrick Mahomes Jr. scrambled out to the right. And as he's scrambling to the right, Kelsey sees him, takes a hard step left, mm-hmm. and then goes back right. And I know it seems obvious and like maybe a waste of time saying, but if you watch anyone else do it, and we saw the Ravens do it a bunch of times, most teams do not have that presence of mind. When your quarterback goes right, you go right. 
If you're deep, you come short. If you're short, you go deep. Those are scramble rules. Everyone knows. And it's just that feeling that we all have when Patrick Mahomes gets out of the pocket, something that I was watching the first half, like I mentioned with my son and my oldest daughter. She doesn't watch very much football. But as soon as Patrick got out of the pocket in the first half of that Kelsey play, yeah. she was like, <gasps> We all know. Everybody knows. As yeah. soon as he gets out of pocket, it is trouble. So yeah. that was fun. I mean, that connection between Patrick and Travis. <laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, the it's connection between you and Frozen Dairy. <laughs> it's it's undefeated. undefeated. Never lost. <laughs> all right. Do you have anything else you want to hit or you want to get to um, our friend Mina Kimes? I just want to say, how good did it feel watching football? Oh. It was great. The NFL, they, they scripted this one right. It was also, it was a delightful appetizer. Yeah, it was great. It was so much fun. I really would have liked to see the two-point play. One more. I, I guess like beggars can't be choosers, but yeah. one more high-pressure play would have been great. This felt like, you know, going to like a Tex-Mex restaurant and they only bring out one basket of chips. You know <laughs> you're you're just ripping through that basket and you expect another one coming. That's what I thought we are going to get with the overtime or the two-point conversion. I think it was better than a basket of chips. No, that's an elite appetizer. <laughs> no, no. We had the basket of chips at the beginning. We had a great meal. No, that Sunday is the great meal. <laughs> this, is, this is the basket oh, of chips. Oh, I guess that's fair. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. I was using today as the meal. You're saying the meal extends from Thursday. Yeah, so what are we at? What's tomorrow? A, a pre-app? A tequila. We got a whole, or today, I guess. We got a whole nother game. The NFL is going to take over. I can't wait. <laughs> they are literally going to take over the world, starting here, going to Sao Paulo. First time I've gotten to say this, football rules. <laughs> it does. I'm glad we're done doing baloney talk yep. in the off season. All right, let's talk to Mina Kimes. All right, time travel time. We're here with Mina Kimes, ready to talk about the games coming up on Sunday. Charlie, where you want to start? Oh, well, first, welcome, Mina. Yeah, so uh, just to get the time travel part of this correct, it's Friday morning, yes. right? We're it is Friday morning. In the world. We just enjoyed that incredible okay. Ravens Woo! Chiefs game. It was so shocking and cool and fun and exactly what we expected at the same time. Oh, man. What if it's just a giant womp womp? There's <laughs> no chance it'll be a womp. I don't think nah, it'll nah, be. I mean, look. I've been we should probably start talking about it. I was about to say, I've been way, starved of football. It doesn't even matter this. if the game is good or not. It's going to be amazing. All right, so what I was thinking, we have a full slate of NFL games. Let's power through them. We're going to continue this theme of ripping off old sports center bits. And this one is what to watch for. You remember when there used to be that voice that would say that and then it would list the things that they're You don't got enough base, but I get, I, get, I get what you're What to watch for. There it is. There that it better. is. That was better. Okay, so I rank these games from most interesting to least interesting. I'm going to give a what to watch for. You guys can tell me if my what to watch for is good, if it sucks, if there's something else we should be watching for. Up to you guys. First one, most interesting game of the weekend after the Ravens-Chiefs game that has definitely already happened by the time we're recording this. Eagles-Packers. My most interesting thing to watch for is, does the Eagles offense look rejuvenated with Kellen Moore calling the plays? I mean, the, I think you can throw both of the coordinators in there. The defense, I've I got to be honest, maybe this is too early to let my bias seep in, but I'm more excited and more interested in the corners that they brought in. Like, I think the ability of Quinn Young Mitchell, and obviously my man, the Cooper white. DeGene, yeah, who is, he's a DB. They're playing him all over the place, but he's actually a corner at heart. I'm looking forward to seeing if they, like, speaking of rejuvenate, rejuvenate that defense, that D-line shows up. It's just a whole overall Eagles rejuvenation that I care about. The quarterback, see if him and the coach come to blows. I guess Jalen would never punch him. He wouldn't. He would just think about it. Yeah, I am probably more interested in the offense, uh, to Charlie's initial point. Just I would be surprised if this Eagles defense really stops Green Bay. Maybe I'm overconfident in Green Bay. I've been ranking them extremely high on offense. But I also just think – what they do on offense, the way they're able, particularly to target the linebacker position, which is a massive question mark for Philadelphia right now. It, it's hard for me to envision a world in which they completely slow them down. So I think the Philadelphia's best chance of this thing is making it some sort of shootout. And uh, yeah, I, I, I want to see right away, has Jalen Hurts solved the blitz problems? Mm -hmm. How does the overall offense just look generally? It's supposed to be radically different. It's supposed to be much more like most 
NFL offenses, right, in terms of a, a greater degree of motion, moving guys uh, to different spots along the formation, throwing to the running back, using Saquon in different ways. But uh, that's a lot of talk. Like, I want to see it before I actually come to a decision as to whether or not I think um, the Eagles have as high a ceiling as some people seem to think. I feel like the um, Packers are – very exciting for us to watch, but less interesting. I think, like, I'm excited to see Jordan Love, yeah. but I find them to have fewer big questions. Like, the defense, again, it's like an ongoing theme for me talking about the Packers, like previous quarterbacks included, is how good is this defense going to be? They have talent that suggests that they're going to figure it out, but they never quite put it together for a long enough period. And that's, like, the the question that's hanging over this team's prospects, I think, going forward. Because we all believe in Jordan Love and that receiving core and what they can do on that side of the ball. I, the, the defense, too, is going to be up to a pretty interesting challenge in this game because the assumption is with the new defensive coordinator, it's going to be more of an attacking four-down front. They're going to play more single high, all of that. But those are not usually things you want to do against Philadelphia. A.J. Brown, um, I don't have his numbers in front of me, but he's got to be one of the best wide receivers against man coverage the last few years. And part of the reason the Eagles offense struggled last year is teams didn't play as much single high. So I'll, I'll be curious to see Dominique early on if this new defensive coordinator, Jeff Halfley, shows some flexibility based on the matchup. I think there's one. It's rare. There's a, a few teams this year that I'm excited about seeing the rushing attack. And it's rare to be like all worked up to see the rushing attack. But it seems like them, the, mm. the uh, Ravens, the Chargers, like these are teams that I want to see them run the ball. The Eagles. Like, I am excited to see Saquon behind or not even behind the first good offensive line, but in what yeah. appears to be a well-rounded, balanced offense. And Saquon's still in his prime. He's not like a washed-up running back. He still has the explosiveness and the speed and the vision that you would want from a great back. And you put him in there behind a good offensive line with receivers that threaten on the outside. Like I, I think Saquon could end up being the focal point of this offense by mid midseason or season's end. Two notable running backs on two teams who are coming from previously bad situations because Josh Jacobs also. In oh, yeah. day. Um, and Mina, to your point about A.J. Brown, um, he was actually first in the NFL in target rate against man coverage and had the fifth highest PFF grade in those things. So he is incredible if you man him up. Yeah, I mean, is do you have any concerns about Jordan Love picking up exactly where he left off last year? Is that now just an assumption because he is that good? Mina? Not really, honestly. Um, there might be some ups and downs. It's not always linear. I remember Dominique and I actually talking about that when he had the dud against the Giants, mm -hmm. right? Was it the Giants, yep. right? Like last year, he had a weirdly bad game, and I, I didn't freak out because I said, eh, you know, this he's a very young quarterback. He's not played a lot of football. There's going to be some small valleys. But largely, I think what we saw last year, it felt real. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like it was just schemed up. Uh, you know, it felt like a quarterback who was really coming into his own with a play caller who really understand his strengths and the strengths of his skill players. And, you know, when I think about the Green Bay Packers, who obviously have so much high, I mean, I was just looking at our, the ESPN Super Bowl picks, like the analyst mm -hmm. picks. So many people have picked the Packers to make the Super Bowl. It's really kind of came out of nowhere, it feels like. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's substantiated. I have more concerns about this defense and – uh, you know, and I've been Lucy with the football a little few too many times with that yeah, unit. The, um, Jordan Love, um, I feel like hype is derogatory. I don't mean it as a negative thing. Like, but it felt like somewhere in the middle of this offseason, people started to think of Jordan Love differently. I guess it was around the contract, but you're right. It It's gotten to a point now where it seems like a, what was probably unreasonable the cow is the Cowboys game. I know you don't want to admit it, it was the Cowboys game. I don't think it was, actually. I think, I mean... Fine. The point is, the to the original question that you asked is, Amina hinted at it or said it directly, but it was the way that he looks and the way that he – it was the plays that he made. And it wasn't a result of him making – always uh, having a play designed for him and executing the play. It was making throws that are not – most teams are, or most players are not capable of making. And yeah, they're going to be valleys. They're valleys for great quarterbacks. He's not going to have a perfect season. Yeah. But – yeah, there's nothing about the way that he played last year that suggests that he's not going to be able to replicate it because it wasn't a result of some completely dominant receiver or a, a schematic advantage that's created. We see that with certain players who put up big numbers. We didn't see that with him. That's an interesting point. We'll move on after this because we have a lot of games to get through. But 
Didn't we sort of make that mistake early on with, with Stroud, too? We're like, look at the situation. He doesn't have great receivers around him. And then by year's end, we're like, oh, Nico Collins and Tank Dell are really good. Love has awesome receivers. I thought Nico Collins and Tank Dell were good before the season. My record on that is out there. I thought Nico Collins was really okay, underrated. Well, but me, yeah, ball, he me obviously who didn't took him think to it was a good level. situation. Uh, imagine generic sports fan who yeah. didn't realize that Tank Dell and Nico Collins yeah, were good. I mean, but no, Wicks, even, if you, even if you thought they were good, you didn't think the situation was yeah. great. But like Wicks, Watson, no. Jaden Reed, those guys are awesome. Mm-hmm. And they have like a ton of them. And I wonder if we're going to look yeah. at that Packers situation the same way by the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, I, I doubt it. I, I think that what I'm thinking of is more like you have one guy and none of these guys, while they're all very, very good, none of them are like a guy that's going to completely dist- – they're not A.J. Brown. Where it's like, all right, I got AJ Brown, I'm good. Everything yeah. else can can um, live off of that. I think if you have to divvy up the the credit and who's getting elevated by whom, I feel like they are probably getting elevated more by Jordan Love than Jordan Love is by them. Mm. And the scheme yeah. too, right? Like you, uh, re- you really. I, I know I kind of alighted over this play caller, figure out how to use him, but it really felt like. Um, they all kind of grew into their more defined roles as the season went on. Jaden Reed being like your vertical guy from the slot. Taven Wicks, intermediate pass catcher, gets you yards after the catch. You know, Christian Watson, outside deep threat when he played. So, yeah, it, it's it's a really good group. There's no obvious. We can joke about number one being an overrated concept. And Matt LaFleur made a joke about that. I think he said, like, the idea of a number one makes me want to puke or something. But there is something to that question. You know, it is the Super Bowl. You're going against Patrick Mahomes. It's third and seven. Who do you know is going to get you a bucket? And that's not obvious uh, when you look at this. Makes you want to puke until you get one, (laughs) then you are not puking. All right, next game. He had one. Yeah, uh, Rams Lions. Rams Lions. Yeah, thank you for stealing my thunder. That is my second most interesting game. (laughs) I did Uh, steal your thunder. I didn't say what you're interested about. The thunder is the question. The thunder isn't the game. You know what? I'm I'm giving up and I'm not doing it. What to watch for? Okay, good. Please, Uh, but here's one. You want to know the really trendy pick? I mean, there were a lot, like, an overwhelming amount of experts had the Lions as the favorite in the NFC over the 49ers and over the Packers, which is interesting, but that's mine. Are they going to come out of the gate against a very good Rams team and look like they're the best team in the NFC? I think so, for a couple of reasons. I think they match up really well with this Rams defense. By the way, we just found out the Rams' number one corner, Darius Williams, is hurt. The rest of that defense is incredibly young. Obviously, you lose Aaron Donald, uh, and this Lions offense is kind of a wagon. So uh, the only chance I feel like the Rams have in this thing is making a shootout, which I would think is entirely possible. I'm so high on this Rams offense. I've talked about it. Matthew Stafford going back in the dome. I like the Lions additions in the back end, but, you know, Puka, Puka Nikola Cooper Cup is a whole other story. However, the Rams are missing uh, definitely their starting left tackle. Potentially their starting right tackle. They've moved guys around on the inside to deal with that. It's not great uh, for them up front. So I feel like the Rams might wor- look worse in this game than they truly are. That dovetailed pretty well with, with the thing that I'm most interested in. Of course, and you called the Ram- the Lions a trendy pick. Maybe it, it, they don't really good. Yeah, yeah they don't feel be. like a trendy pick. They feel like a legitimate pick. But I do think that the what you were bringing up, the potential of a shootout, I think that's going to be the question for whether the Lions get to where they expect to get to or not, is do they have the pass rush? And more importantly, considering where I come from, the corners in the secondary to stop people. And they went and got Terry and Arnold. They got um, Carlton Davis. And I, I know you and I both love what Brian Branch was able to do last year. Like, is this secondary and their pass rush going to be able to play – the type of defense throughout the course of this year. It'll be easier in this game, no doubt, but through the course of this season, that's going to make them a Super Bowl contender, and I want to see it in week one. You know what's crazy about their schedule? It is so set up for them to be the number one seed. Mm -hmm. They have 14 indoor games. This is why I I'm I ended up picking the Lions to go to the Super Bowl with the 49ers because I think they're going to get the number one seed, and I think Jared Goff is going to get to play in a dome all the way up to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And then also play in a dome. Yeah. all right, next game. We're gonna we're gonna roll through these. Uh, Bills Cardinals, my third most interesting game, and my what to watch for. You did it. You said yeah. you weren't. I, mean, I know, but then I felt like it was. Stuff. Yeah, I couldn't right. resist. Uh, this season is set up for Josh Allen to win MVP. The narrative is out there. You know, lose Diggs, lose Davis. Nobody believes in us. So we're not the favorite in the division over the, over the Jets. But that's not the most interesting thing to me. I want to see my beloved 
Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> you want to talk about a number one? I want to see if he walks in the door as like a true ex number one guy. He's not your beloved. He's my beloved. I picked him first. I think I incepted you with that take. <laughs> no way. You try to claim it. Take exception. I, I think the the crazy take that the number one wide receiver taken in the NFL draft is going to no, be awesome. No, I was just I was just like sitting in our our like watching football one Sunday, and I was like, I think Marvin Harrison is the best college receiver I've seen since Charles Rogers at Michigan State, and I just sort of repeated it enough <laughs> until people paid attention to me. I like this with this um alternate reality that you've created that the Marvin Harrison Jr. hype is is Charlie. No, 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 no. I it's think snack generation. No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, look. You picked him to be your rookie of the year over Caleb Williams. I'm saying I accepted you to be very excited about him. Uh, not right. not everyone else. Yeah, I, I have mean, two fans. You 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 also cheated by giving two different uh, things that you're excited about. My game. <laughs> I do like both of those. I think the it's less exciting, but it is interesting. Is I, I've picked the Bills. I think to still win the AFC. Um, what are they in East? No. They're in the East. Yeah, they have the East. And the question of whether they can win it or not is completely, to me, at least contingent on two things. Their receiving core and will they figure out something to do with this defense minus Matt Milano. They are a, a very a snake-bitten bunch. They have been the last few years. But we'll see what happens in this game for that team against Marvin Harrison. And Kyler will be fun. I think the Bills' offense is fascinating. And Josh Allen's MVP case is very real because of – the narrative around it. I don't think it's fascinating in this mm -hmm. game. The Carlos defense stinks. Yeah. Like if they can't move the ball on them, then I will radically reconsider a lot of things I think about the Buffalo Bills. The other side of the ball, however, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s side is very interesting to me. Uh, Carlos' run game was awesome last year. I want to see one, can they run the ball in Buffalo? I think that's entirely possible. But also to Charlie's point, I agree with you. Like I want to see Marvin Harrison. We didn't really see much in the preseason, right? You're not really also like, I feel like Malik neighbors. I constantly am seeing these like clips and buzz. It's been a little bit more quiet. I mean, it's Arizona, so it's always gonna be more quiet, but I'm unbelievably high on him. I think it's a great situation for him. I think he's going to get a ton of targets. Uh, and yeah, I'm very fascinated by him week one. I mean, there's the first thing we heard from Jonathan Gannon when he got hired was about how he wanted an offense with, this is a quote, pew pew explosives. <laughs> he now has Marvin Harrison Jr. and a healthy Kyler Murray. Like that, there should be some fireworks. Pew pews. That's a, his words, not mine. All right, the next most interesting game, Texans Colts. Mm. What I find most interesting about this, there are storylines with the Colts with Anthony Richardson coming back, but it's not that. It is how pass heavy will the Texans offense be this year? Because while we all love CJ Stroud, Slowick was pretty conservative with what he allowed him to do for a lot of that season. And I am wondering if in year two, we're going to get CJ Stroud unleashed. I'm surprised you didn't go with your buddy, Anthony Richardson like that. You're not excited. You've been hyping him up uh, since he got drafted as the next big thing. And you don't. Yeah. You're a big Richardson huge guy. Richardson guy. Oh, he's a huge Richard, the guy he didn't set me with that take. Nope. Cause that take take his booty. <laughs> um, uh, we'll I, see. The, we'll this, see. Yeah. I haven't given up. No, nah, I, I don't think you should get up. He's or give up. He's interesting and has a lot of ability, and he has Shane Steichen. I mean, do you really want to watch him throw like 10, 10 hitches to to Michael Pittman and then just <laughs> run into the into the line for eight yard gains? I mean, they got uh, they got the dude from Texas, um, uh, Mitchell. Adam yeah. Mitchell. Yeah, who, can, uh, he. In his own words, only tries in big games. So. <laughs> well, this is a big game. His first NFL game is a big game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the the intrigue around this game is about C.J. Stroud. It's, uh, his second year, for me at least, his second yeah. year, and um, Stephon Diggs joining that offense. How um, different is going to look with Stephon Diggs? How dangerous can it be? And has C.J. Stroud improved? Are they going to be a legitimate Super Bowl? Because they qualify as a trendy Super Bowl team. They are like the, the people who want to get cute. We'll pick a team like them. What do you think, Mina? I find the Richardson side way more interesting in this one just because I think C.J. Stroud is going to carve up the Colts. He carved up the Colts last year. It's a Gus Bradley defense, ton of cover three. C.J. Stroud in this offense annihilated it. Anthony Richardson, on the other hand, is a, a total mystery box. Uh, we saw a little bit in the preseason. It was um, confusing. <laughs> it was a roller coaster. There was an amazing drive. There were some... Bad throws, picks, some of which were not his fault, but or one of which was not his fault. But, like, I just don't know, man. Like, the dude's played so little football. Uh, I think I saw somewhere that he has, like, I don't know who I'm taking this from. I saw it on Twitter. Someone wrote, tweeted that he has, like, 17 starts since mm -hmm. high school. Like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, so, you know, I, I have 
all, I find him fascinating. I have not come down super high on Richardson or negative. I've been very like ginger with my Richardson takes just because I think he's so hard to project. Uh, so I'm very intrigued by him in this one. <laughs> to expand it a little broader for the, the whole Colts team. Like I, I'm interested in DeForest Buckner being paired up with, um, uh, what's the guy they drafted? Oh, they got Latu. Latu, yeah, Latu is. I mean, projects as one of the best pass rushers. He may not be a complete, probably the most polished guy yeah. in that class, but had the medical concerns. Yeah, I think Latu next to Buckner because Buckner, I mean, he's a step down from Chris Jones. I guess if anyone can say there are very few people that are in the neighborhood, I think that means something for this defense because that's the way this defense is designed. It's like the. Or that's the best way it plays is when that uh, front four is attacking and aggressive and unblockable. I think that means a lot for the future of this Colts team. But the Colts are not otherwise a championship contender. So, I don't know. I, I do care about DeForest Buckner, though. I, what, what's, the, what's the Texans sideline look like if they're up 24 nothing at halftime? You're, you're about to roll this up. Well, so like, okay, here we go. C.J. Stroud, we know he loves Tank Dell. He, they said if he could build like any team ever, his wide receivers. I can't remember who the third is. Like Jerry Rice. Randy Moss and Tank Dell. <laughs> I can't, I can't, but, the big three. Um, but what happens if it's like 24 nothing? helmets are off, they're celebrating, Tank Dell and Nico Collins have 100 yards, and then Steph Diggs has three targets, 16 yards. What are the vibes? So I actually, this was, we did, every now and then NFL Live, they make me do picks, like parlay picks, mm -hmm. right? And it was Steph Diggs, five catches. Mm -hmm which is kind of a fascinating number because he's exceeded that like many, many, many times and it is low. Uh, target share, however, is obviously, there's a lot of mouths to feed. You alluded to this. But I feel like I, Brady talked about this, right? The psychological aspect of feeding uh, elite wide receiver is like a real thing that play callers care about. It's very hard for me to imagine a world in which Steph Diggs doesn't get heavily targeted in this game for that reason. Yeah, I mean, they went and acquired him. They plan on using him. I, I frustrated with Charlie because Charlie was trying to <laughs> propagate this notion that Steph Diggs is – that acquiring Steph Diggs makes this roster a lot more volatile and that him being upset could somehow throw this roster off, and I don't buy that at all. I don't – if, if Steph Diggs turns out I'm to I'm just not asking be, questions. Right, it, again and again and again, which means you want somebody – to bite on it if he turns out to not be happy or not be productive in there he will be ostracized he will not bring down the texans you didn't say this but i know you were thinking if you were to rank all of the head coaches in the nfl and all of the quarterbacks in eq Ooh. like intangibles Ooh. the texans would probably be top five yeah, at both so you don't do this trade for steph Diggs unless you believe that that's a better defense than dominique has given me the entire time no nah. thank you no, um this is perfect <laughs> It's not about Diggs, yeah. my defense. It's about those Mine definitely. is not about Diggs either. It's about the, the locker room that they have. But okay, Mina's answer is better than mine. It tends to be the case. <laughs> Next game, Jaguars-Dolphins. Can't believe you have this over Cowboys-Browns. Yeah. He ranked them. As, oh, those now, are my rankings. Now is Mina's her response right there too? No, no, Cowboys-Browns. <laughs> Not that interesting to me. We'll get there next. Um, thanks for spoiling it, Mina. Uh, I'm pretty <laughs> interested to see if Trevor Lawrence is actually <laughs> so good. Mad. Oh come on! That's, you're getting lazy. <laughs> we gotta be honest. That Trolling. is lazy. Troll. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't. I don't. Will not justify that with a response. I That's can fine. say that it's not that interesting. What's more interesting to me is honestly the new offensive wrinkle. Like we've all accepted that yeah, yeah. Mike McDaniel is gonna come out with something interesting and new last year was the like outside motion and I, i'm looking forward to seeing what he rolls out this year so they can dominate early in the season and struggle when it gets cold outside it's like your friend who you know you, you they're always kind of like in, introducing new things into their style right like a little <laughs> yeah. you're like oh I, okay I know that or, yeah i don't who is that person that we know i'm trying to think if there's anyone who actually fits into that category uh, you honestly, Ashley uh, gives you no, some interesting no, stuff. No, no. I mean, are you serious? Ryan Clark, 100%. Oh, yeah. Ryan Clark, yeah, Ryan Clark is it. always put yeah. is, is pushing the envelope with new. Um, I'll never forget, man. The day he showed up wearing that velvet bow tie Ooh, that was like this yeah. large. That was the equivalent of the Mike McDaniel fast motion. <laughs> where I was just like, wow. Yeah, well, it wow. was a risk. The, well, the, I guess it's yeah, not because no one else. That's what I was saying. Everyone else started doing like that Mike McDaniel exit motion. No one else. Yeah. No one else could pull off the the fluffy tie, but our man RC. 
I'm interested in that side yeah. of it. The Lawrence side, I, it's not to me about whether he's good. It's can you keep up with the Dolphins in a shootout because that's probably the only chance of winning this thing. Yeah. I mean, the the to the Dolphins' point, I did think it was interesting that Tua said that they're very aware of very early in the season that Tyreek Hill could get 2,000 yards and they catered a lot of the offense to feeding him more targets and that they expect Jalen Waddle to be a co-number one receiver this year. That's interesting to me oh, along with – Nine yards to carry, Devon A. Chan is. It, I have him. Um, list, I'm very jealous. So I'm really good about um, but I want to see how, like, you know, every time he touched the ball last year, he was sort of just the best running back in the NFL. And hopefully he could be more healthy this year. A small defense, defense on the Lawrence thing. Yes, I was trolling of, is he actually good? But it's, it's a matter of expectations, and he got paid a lot. And I do think it, at this point in his career, we are expecting him to either jump to be like a pretty elite quarterback or be disappointed with the fact that he's sort of a mid-tier guy. And no situation has been unfair, whether it's Urban Meyer, Jags roster, et cetera, et cetera. I'm kind of looking forward to Tua's post-game press conference. Tua says stuff now. Show, yeah. show me the money, Tua. Out here talking. Is there a Dolphins-Vikings game? Hold on. <laughs> no, they're not. Mm. Gosh, Got to be the Super Bowl. That sucks. I'm sure Tua checked out the Dolphins Vikings Super Bowl. Dolphins, uh, give, Cash that. Ticket. I would say Brian Flores would blitz the hell out of him to get revenge, but Brian Flores blitzes the hell out of everyone. Yeah, because uh, yeah, right. they and don't have anything. Also, Tua holds the ball for a quarter of a second. It's very true. All right, next game: Cowboys Browns. <gasps> Look at us on the ESPN podcast. Not putting this as the number one interesting game, <laughs> most interesting game. But um, here's my mind. Is Mike Zimmer an upgrade over Dan Quinn for the Cowboys defense? That's an important one. I think uh, it's it's not entirely off of that, but uh, both of these teams feature incredible pass rushers, and both are going against yeah. either young or backups on the offensive line. It could be an absolute bloodbath for um, both defensive lines. Cowboys, you're rolling out two rookies. Guyton's looked great in the preseason. Miles Garrett, it's very different. And then um, on the other side of the football, uh, the Browns, I just saw, are down, I think, like, both of their tackles. I think Dewan Jones might play on the right side and the left side is a question. Number. I don't know who's playing tackle for the Browns, to be honest. So, yeah, and the Cowboys pass rush is what it is. And I, it feels like just a game where both of those – elite pass rushes could take over. I want to defend my buddy Charlie on this one. I am interested in a Zimmer defense. Mostly to see they're going up against and the the, ta- the missing tackles for the Browns makes it a little bit harder to get a true gauge, but the Browns run the ball well and it felt like the Cowboys last year got pushed around in the running attack and seeing them in the Zimmer addition, see how much that impacts their um, defensive structure against the run. It's pretty important to me. I don't know if they'll run the ball well. Yeah. I mean, you know, backups, backup offensive linemen, Watson back no, there. No chub. I get it. But they do traditionally run. The, they ran the ball well last year. By the way, this is Dak Prescott's Jimmy Butler game when he was in the tunnel yelling, Tobias Harris over me. Like, if he looks at Deshaun Watson's contract and walks off the field, he should point at Jerry Jones and be like, $250 million guaranteed for that bum. Give me all of the guaranteed money. It doesn't Bears even work. Like, it, it's not Jerry, the same. Jerry, Jerry Jones. <laughs> you know, you miss, you miss sometimes. You're, you're getting excited for the season. <laughs> I thought I'd say something nice about Dak, and oh, that's, that's when fishing. you turned on me. I didn't turn on you. We're, we have a – I mean, accountability matters in this locker room. It was room. bad. It was. It was yeah, bad. That's, oh, you need to know it was bad. I Get know. back in the huddle, next play. I did be fair. I knew it was bad before you told me it was bad. <laughs> I was floundering out there as, as I was saying it. All right. Bears-Titans. Next game. Why is this interesting to me? Caleb Williams. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. That's it. That's not, I mean, I, I, I just want to give a shout out to my man, Denard Wilson, getting a shout out. At yeah, I was like, who wrote Denard Wilson on <laughs> this me. document? That's me. <laughs> As the most yeah. interesting thing in Bears' time. He, he was my safety in college. At the Terps, I love Day Day. He finally got a chance to coordinate the defense. I hope it goes well. What do you, let me, okay, nerd out for a second. What do you think that defense is going to look like? Because there's a lot of assumptions that everyone who's been spent, you know, had a cup of coffee in Baltimore is going to be running simulated pressures and split safety looks like Mike McDonald. But I'm not so sure for anyone like him, Weaver or whatever, like because the tech, the Titans um, completely revamped their defense this year. They added a ton of obviously yeah. Jerry Sneed, but Wuzie, Quandre Diggs. It's like they add a lot of actually pretty good veteran players. Like what kind of system do you think he's going to run? 
Sorry, there's a giant garbage truck outside my appropriate during a <laughs> Titans defense discussion. It's here a little late after pull. that that um Jimmy Butler joke. It should have been here around then. It's also there to pick up that joke of the callback. <laughs> no, got it. Got a chuckle from Lena like, Kimes. That was my a, joke is not going to the trash. I would close the window, but my air conditioner has been broke for four days. <laughs> oh, it's gosh. devastating. I know. I'm playing through Too it. Too bad you don't live playing in a. It. I mean, you live in a place where the weather's perfect every day. So it's not like it's 80 out there or 90. Why am I holding a letter over? <laughs> uh, tell us about the defense. Um, I yeah, I think my guess would be it'll be very similar to the thing about the Ravens' defense is that I think it's flexible, and it's at least the the way that it's explained is it's very it gives the illusion of complexity. And it can change depending on your personnel. Going heavy with the secondary, I think, is also gives you being strong in a particular position gives you some flexibility. I think that they have that flexibility. My guess is they lean on a lot of cover four based stuff, like the safeties kind of read it out and like cover four based stuff, meaning uh, four, six, two, those sorts of things. Um, Legere Sneed is not, he's incredibly good, but I don't think of him. And he's incredibly valuable. But I don't think of him as, we're going to play man coverage. You go take that guy off the field. I don't think that's where you get the best version of Legere Sneak. Really? Yeah, I don't. Interesting. Am I a hater? No, that's just, yeah, I'm not a hater. I, I think that some people would disagree. I think with it's probably uh, from, like, the Spags defenses. It's like, that's not how Spags wanted to use Legere Sneed, And that's not how I've seen him used. Am I missing something? One thing I'm going to be curious, though, one thing Spags did do with Legere Sneed was – Obviously, press a yeah. lot, and that's something I'm going to be interested in in seeing if he asks if he asks his DBs to press a bit. Next game, Falcons Steelers. I call this the Arthur Smith Bowl, and it's both sides because it's like, how good are the Falcons skill position players going to be look are going to look not being held back by Arthur Smith? And then also, how mad is George Pickens going to be by halftime when Najee Harris has like 25 carries for 68 yards? Here's what I find interesting in this one. Russ Wilson might not play. Mm. You guys see yeah. that? He's got like a tight calf or something. Something ominous sounding for an older quarterback. And that would be actually fascinating to me if after losing the job, Justin Fields ends up starting week one. Dominique, do you think there's any chance that Justin Fields, if he does start, could um, acquit himself you know, against this Falcons defense well enough t- so that Russell Wilson can't get it back? Yeah. I mean, Russell Wilson is not that exciting. I don't imagine that they're in a hurry to get Russell Wilson back. Like, it, it doesn't feel like either of these options seem all that attractive. The The thing about Justin Fields is there it feels like there's that athleticism high um, ceiling that Russell doesn't um, give you. And so, like, I, I, I've always thought eventually they would get to Justin Fields at some point. At some point this season, it's earlier than I anticipated because there are lots of bad habits that he probably needs to work out of his system. But, yeah, I, I mean, it's realistic. If he plays well in this game, this defense holds them down and he gives, he makes them competitive. There's no reason to rush, rush Russell back out there the following week. Do you guys know how Russell Wilson hurt his calf? Yeah. Mina doesn't know. Tell her. I don't Pushing know. a blocking sled after practice. <laughs> that is the funniest Russell Wilson way to hurt his calf in history. Oh, gosh. It's outstanding. How happy are he, you? He cares you, a lot. Football family you, flying, pushing sleds. That you no longer have to root for him. Like, <laughs> you can openly laugh at. Not because of the cringe or stuff, but because by the end, it was like a really painful watch because held on to the football, didn't throw to the middle of the field, You know, took a ton of sacks. It, it felt like you couldn't run a normal offense with him uh, at the end of his tenure in Seattle. And I, th- I just think it's this, it'll be really interesting with Fields because I don't think this Falcons, I think they're better certainly with the additions that they've made. I still don't think they're you know particularly great. So it feels like there's an, this is an opportunity for him. The Steelers, be, oh, by the way, the, the first few weeks of their schedule are quite easy. So if, if that happens, there's a real chance for him, but he, he obviously has to play better than what we've seen. I just am excited to see B. John. Yeah. Like, I, he was so fun at the beginning of last season, so exciting. I would like to see B. John in a fully functional offense for a full season. And I suspect that he'll be the one that they're trying to get the ball to in all situations. Yeah, I mean, and we know Pitt, obviously Pitts has the hamstring injury, but – they haven't featured those guys the way that you normally feature top 10 picks when it's 
Bijan, Drake London, and Pitts, and presumably they'll do that this season. That's actually exciting, not just from like a fantasy near perspective, but those guys are really explosive, exciting players. Getting now down near the Drake. Yeah, we're now at the least interesting games. This one, next one is uh, the Panthers and the Saints. I put this as my next most interesting just because this is like the live leak of football games where you could switch over on red zone and there could be like any sort of accident or fire thing. The field could be imploding. Your rankings are horrible from here on out. I just want to, I'm looking at them right now. I won't spoil them, but like this is their insane. <laughs> this is this game and the next game should absolutely be at the bottom. I cannot believe you have them over yeah, some of the games. I mean, and the question is how. Are you looking at these rankings, yeah, Dominic? I, are you seeing what I'm seeing? I don't love him. Spencer Rattler, how good is he? Or, or will he get in the game? Because that's. That's, no, he's not going to. Stop. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of as interesting. The other thing is, like, um, can they make Bryce look reasonable? That's yeah. what I want to see. Does he but look But do you believe yeah. it? That's like, I, I, I will see. I mean, all right. We'll, we'll see. Whatever. All right. Give it a shot. Moving on. Yeah. Next one. All right. Uh, the, Unreal that you have this team next. The, the fifth oh, least interesting game of the weekend. <laughs> um Chargers Raiders. It's it is a shock. That I just want to know what what Jim Harbaugh is going to do. What the Harbaugh effect is going to be on this team? I Mina, mean, you seem upset by hit the ranking, so I'll let you go attack him. What do you think he's going to do? He's going to run the <laughs> ball. That's exactly what I have. That's is like I want to see how ridiculously him and Greg Roman forced the running attack. <sighs> they went and got uh. Uh, what's his name? Scott Madlock, <laughs> the yes, monster fullback. A defensive tackle slash fullback. Yeah, that that seems fun. And I have a hot take. Lad McConkey is going to be their leading receiver. Yo, I got. I just picked. Sorry, I know no one cares about fantasy, yeah. but I have him in the ESPN War Room League. He is starting. It's a very very deep league. Yeah. He is starting for uh, Lenny's Dogs. Mm. We we need we need a big season out yeah. of Lad McConkey. I think I think he's going to have a big season relative to the rest of those uh, receivers. I just updated the rankings in our fourth least interesting game of the weekend. Bucks Commanders to see Jaden Daniels, my beloved, my large adult son. How is that not more interesting than the previous <laughs> I didn't want to feel biased. Like, he's, cha- he's changing the rankings and they're still bad. The, know, the least so interesting like game will not change. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why Mina's so mad. It's not the uh-huh. I, yeah, this is, it's well. First of all, it's you're wrong. Yeah, that's the bit. You're oh ruining God. the bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, Jane Daniels. Yeah, Jane yeah, Daniels yeah, is the obvious answer. Right. Yeah, Next, going. Giants Vikings. There's been so much Malik Neighbors hype. You you talked about it. I'm actually really excited. Like you have Sauce Gardner comparing him to like Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and all of the one hand catches in practice. The analytics before the draft had him. At each of his age points being one of the most dominant college receivers we've ever seen. Plus, he runs a 4-3. He can take slants to the house. I'm genuinely excited to see Malik Neighbors play. Yeah, I can't disagree with you. I mean, it's, it's Malik Neighbors is the one. I, I put Brian Flores in there just because, I don't know, he's the only other thing. I, I think his, his ride back to maybe becoming a head coach and what he's going to do with that defense I think is interesting. Uh, they were one of the more fun defenses to watch over last season, not only because they were creative, but and, and they got more out of less. So I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. uh, what Brian Flores does with that defense. Am I the only person who's interested in seeing if Sam Darnold can play well in the best uh, you situation can't, you he's can't ever quit been him. Yeah, you're the only one. You're the only one here. <laughs> you can't I, quit Sam I didn't say he's good. I just want to see uh, it. Yeah. I mean, I see didn't we see it, it last year? Actually- we saw it last year in a better situation, didn't we? No, Brock, Brock Purdy kept playing through concussions. He played in yeah. week 18, but nobody played. No, he, he, like the, he came in, I guess it might have been the Ravens. They were blowing them out. Yes, yeah, after like four interceptions in the first half. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Next uh, game. Next one. Bengals-Patriots, the second least interesting game of the weekend. <laughs> um, uh, what do you find interesting about this? How much money is Jamar Chase going to be paid by the time people are listening to this? No, it's, it's honestly it's Burrow's, Burrow's health. See Burrow in action. I mean, I'm interested to see what this defense does, but I mean, this is not really a real test for the defense. So uh, I think I'm interested in the defense uh, and Trey Hendrickson for the season, not on Sunday. It's a real test in so far as if they don't shut down this <laughs> yeah, Patriots offense, they are confirmed beauty. <laughs> and yes. I am re- <laughs> really re- re- reconsidering uh, what you know the upside for the Cincinnati Bengals based on that. It was a bad defense last year. Uh, it's defense I still have a lot of question marks about. I guess the other thing that I find interesting is can Jacoby Brissett s- survive? That's a good question. Con- confirmed Mr. confirmed Robert. booty is, i don't know what it is but it's a great name for something that's literally what you do every day when you walk on set oh. here 
Dominique dude, do walks co- in, I do confirm looks my at his butt on the screen from the from from <laughs> camera one and goes, "Wow, got a nice butt." I do. It shocks me every day. Every time I come in here, it's three times a week, and I'm like, confirm. every three times a week, every and I, time. I double take like, who who that who that and oh that's me, nice cakes Fox. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the least interesting game of week one is uh, Broncos Seahawks. That was going to be a bit, but I mean, I finally opened the doc midway through the show and realized <laughs> the bit and got angry about it. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing interesting. No, about this no, game. no. I, the interesting thing. Uh, yeah, blah blah blah. Mina, I would ask you, is this a real sleeper team? Because we're starting to see betting markets reflect that the Seahawks are a team that could actually win yeah. the AFC West. Um, and McDonald could win coach of the year and that they were, you know, sort of snake bitten last year. Do you think this is this team is actually better than we realize? I do. Coach of the year, I definitely think is in play. I don't think they're going to win the NFC West. Oh, I said the AFC um, West, my bad. <laughs> they used to be in the AFC West. Nice. Flashback. I have a Bronco Seahawks t-shirt somewhere. Bronco Busters. Um, I think a lot of it at rest, there, there's really two things and, and you kind of will get a sense of those. Uh, one is if this offensive line can hold up, Broncos pass rush isn't that great because if the, if the offensive line can hold up, this Seahawks offense should absolutely go right. Like, and then defensively, uh, can they get towards average? I mean, they were one of the worst defenses in the NFL last year. Um, I, I am interested in seeing. Uh, Bo Nix and Sean Payton, you know, all of the stated... Ble- I mean, there's a lot of hype around Bo Nix yeah. right now based on the preseason. So I feel like, you know, Seahawks defense is still putting it all together. Tons of new pieces. New defense is kind of complicated. Um, can Bo Nix substantiate that hype against, you know... W- w- it's it's not going to be one of his stiffer challenges early yeah. on. I mean, the, the Seahawks defense is not without important pieces, and maybe that's my cornerback bias um, seeping in. They have corners that I like. I think a smart coach can elevate this defense to a point that's respectable. And Geno's everybody's favorite quarterback, right? Like, he's... Yeah. He's a, he is having a, a hipster off. Like, I feel like all the football yeah. dorks have been sort of, you know, spreading the Geno propaganda this offseason. Yeah, season. all the hipsters, fo- football people. The football monoculture. If we all, <laughs> uh, we all you, must agree about DBOA and EPA. Here we, Here we go with this. You're, you, and, you and Pablo... Hating, hating smart football people. No, I love it. You're actually a smart football person. Thank you. Well, try, you try to pretend like you're not. We're gonna pre- we're gonna see how smart I could be because uh, we're gonna end this show with something we're gonna do every week on this, which is what I call the I can't lose Survivor League, um, because even if I lose, I'm really not losing if I lose to you guys. Uh, we're gonna do a Survivor pool. We're each gonna pick a different team every week. Um, I'll go first. Okay. I'm gonna take the Bengals. Get him off the board. Safe pick. You guys can't pick him. Go ahead. All right. Wait, we can't pick. That's not how Survivor <laughs> mine works. That's how it works on this show, baby. <laughs> All right, Vino, who you got? He took the most obvious choice. <laughs> he took the game. He what? took it. Hold on. Let me pull up the schedule. You <laughs> can go next. You rat. Uh, I'll go <laughs> with go last. the... I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills, Ooh. I guess. It's probably the second yeah, most popular that's, pick, that's I would say. That's who I would have chosen also. All right, give me the Chargers going to the Raiders, I guess. No? I, I like get it. lock it in. No, take it. Screen yeah. Tag. Lock it in. What happens when someone gets bounced? This is a three person survivor. <laughs> yeah, this is, is going to be a three week league, man. That's right. Three week league. Could be a one week league. Could be three, <laughs> three upsets. Um, I don't feel confident at all with any of these picks. I picked the road team. That was dumb. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. Yeah. I mean, what do you want me? You want me to believe in the Texans going to the Colts? The yeah, I would have gone with the Texans at the Colts or the Seahawks. Seahawks, uh, nah. These are all road teams. Rookie quarterback. No, they're in Seattle. Yeah. Oh yeah. Quarterback going in Seattle. I'm switching. Unlock it. You going with Seahawks? I'm gonna lose. I've watched this. You know what? I I actually, I'm just, I'm starting to feel bad for you, so I'll let you pick the Seahawks. Thank you. Because uh, I was going to say the punishment would be you get kicked off the show, but that can't happen. <laughs> It'd be a fun Dominique Foxler show <laughs> with no Dominique Foxler. That's right. Uh, all right, Mina, thank you so much. Enjoy the game. Or I hope you enjoyed the game. Uh, see you soon. Oh, what a great opener. <laughs> I'm just still basking in the glow of last I can't night. wait till next week when I'm on your show. All right. See you Tuesday. See you, bye. 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 Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Mina. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, great producers. I love you, Paul. Bill, we out. Cortez is a coward. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show.